Hey gang, Mel here. So I'm hanging out in the backyard just waiting for the barbecue to finish cooking here, but thought I'd uh, help address some of these uh, quick questions I got in the in the deep dive uh, screencasting course for Camtasia Studio and also for Camtasia for Macintosh. And some of these have also come up in the digital know-how course as well. Okay, so um, one of the questions I got, this came out of the Camtasia for Macintosh course. So Jay asked, what's better, Camtasia for Macintosh or ScreenFlow? And is it worth buying Camtasia if you already have ScreenFlow? And the, you know, it's a, it's a tough question because they're actually both very good software. These are actually obviously uh, both for the Macintosh. Uh, and they're both very good software. As a matter of fact, they go head to head against each other. Um, and uh, I like them both. However, I will say that if you already have ScreenFlow, I don't think there's any need to go and uh, go purchase Camtasia for Macintosh. They'll both do exactly what you're, you know, a lot of the things that you want. They both have multi-track editing capabilities. They both have animations. They can also crop videos uh, as well for, uh, for both of those. A lot of the things that you'll want uh, to be able to do uh, professional level screencasting. So um, uh, I'd say if you already have ScreenFlow, just go ahead and hang on to it. No need to go buy Mac and the Camtasia for Macintosh version. I will say though, there are some differences. Um, you know, one will do things that the other won't do and so on. Like for instance, Camtasia for Macintosh probably has a few more um, video animations and annotations and so on, like callouts, uh, pre-made arrows, sketch drawings, those kinds of callouts that you can easily add into your uh, your project timeline. Uh, whereas ScreenFlow doesn't have a whole lot of those things. However, what I will say ScreenFlow does do uh, that's uh, better than uh, the Camtasia for Macintosh is they have bit better video filters and better audio filters as well. Uh, so for instance, if you wanted to cut out some background noise out of your audio, um, you can do that a lot better in, in ScreenFlow than you can for Camtasia for Macintosh. So uh, so there's probably a few more things in terms of the filter environment for uh, in ScreenFlow uh, for the power user, but you know for if you want more animations or I'm sorry annotations, callouts, graphics, those kinds of things, you have more of that in Camtasia for Macintosh. All right, next question. Let's take a look at the next question here. So um, here. Uh, we're being asked, I want to know, is it true that Mac version of Camtasia uh, supports much more functions in the Windows version? And he watched some of my main videos, but couldn't find corresponding functions in Camtasia Studio. So this is a student that was accessing the Camtasia for Macintosh course and was trying to see if he could compare some of the same functions in Camtasia Studio. And you're not going to be able to do all of that. Uh, that um, a feature by feature comparison because you're absolutely right not all features that you'll find in Camtasia Studio will be found in Camtasia for Macintosh it's probably one of the reasons why Camtasia for Macintosh is a third of the price that Camtasia Studio is uh, but let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the the features here so one of the responses that I did give here was again great question so some of the uh, things that you might find in terms of the difference between Camtasia for Studio and for Macintosh for instance down here the ability for voice -to voice to text captioning you can do that in Studio not in Mac um, and quizzes you can do in Studio and also there's a PowerPoint plugin for Camtasia Studio that you won't find in Camtasia for Macintosh and then there's also the integration of a screen draw app you know that allows you to be able to draw um, use a, a Wacom tablet and a, st a stylus and be able to actually do like Khan Academy type drawings, you know, where you can stencil and uh, do like whiteboard type drawings and so on. That's actually integrated into Camtasia Studio. Uh, and it's not integrated in Camtasia for Macintosh, although you can easily get third party plugins for that as well. Uh, there's also an assets library you'll find in Camtasia Studio that you won't find in Macintosh. And then there's also the grouping function uh, that works pretty well in Camtasia Studio as well. Um, that said, there are also some features in Camtasia for Macintosh that you won't find in Studio. Um, now, down here I did say chroma key, although just a couple of weeks ago, version 8.1 of Camtasia Studio did roll out green screen effect, so you can now actually uh, do a chroma key, uh, so, uh, so we'll scratch out a little bottom part there. But the ability to crop embedded videos, um, that's also changed now as well. So I would actually say a lot of these are some of these uh, things that used to be in Camtasia Mac that you couldn't find in Studio. Uh, uh, probably don't apply anymore because the big thing there was video cropping uh, and also this green screen effect. You used to be able to have that in Camtasia for Macintosh uh, and, and not in Studio, but that's no longer the case as of two weeks ago with version 8.1 of Camtasia Studio. All right, so let's take a look at the last question here. And the last question was right here. Uh, I've been thinking of going Macintosh, but I work in primarily a Windows environment 
and to date I found, uh, haven't found a Mac tool that allows me to load windows like you have in all of your videos and the courses. Uh, and what he's talking about is uh, where I'm able to, you know, clearly you know I use a Macintosh, but I'm able to show a Windows environment and play Camtasia Studio and record Camtasia Studio. How do I do that on my Macintosh? Well, the quick answer there is I actually use a virtual environment, one called Parallel. So here's the Parallels uh, application. Uh, so it's basically another software that you'll install on your Macintosh and it allows you to be able to have different environments. Uh, and just keep in mind though that you will still need to purchase, uh, in addition purchasing, purchasing Parallels, you will also need to purchase the uh, Windows operating system and install that in the Parallels environment. And then, uh, and then any additional Windows-based software that you want to use within Parallel. So that's basically how I'm able to switch back and forth uh, pretty easily. Okay, so that takes care of the uh, the questions for this week, uh, so at least the main ones. There's been some other little little uh, questions going on. Again, if this is your first time here, uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button as well. And if you haven't uh, visited Digital Know How yet, to take a look at my online course for learning how to screencast and create your own online courses through screencasting, you want to go ahead and take a look at that. All right, this is Mel with Screencasting Wizard. Help you digitize your knowledge to get it online, web ready. Take care.